click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to this video with this video we are having the 8th chapter of microwave engineering where the transmission of microwave signal we are having with the help of single conductor microwave transmission line called as waveguide and now it is having the rectangular cross section hence the name rectangular waveguide so for the rectangular waveguide and transmission associated for the microwave signal we have found the solutions corresponding to the wave equations and the two alternatives we have either to go for transverse electric mode of propagation or transverse magnetic mode of propagation in the previous video we have been solved with problem number 1 corresponding to tm mode of wave propagation let us take another problem so here we have been provided a problem statement the problem statement is a waveguide with the dimension of 3 by 2 cm operates in tm11 mode at 10 gigahertz determine the characteristic wave impedance see the problem statement is very simple and straightforward to see the problem statement we have the waveguide referring to the rectangular waveguide here with the dimensions of internal cross section given 3 by 2 cm here so therefore the given details we can note down first of all so if we start the solution from this place the given details are small a is equal to 3 cm the broader dimension called as breadth of the waveguide whereas the smaller dimension width of the waveguide will be having the smaller value 2 cm here so in terms of si systems the representation it will be 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters for small a whereas small b is given as 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters here now the mode of operation is a tm11 mode the same mode we have been used in calculation of the three parameters into the previous problem there now in addition to the information regarding mode of propagation we have been provided the value of frequency the value of frequency f here can be denoted so it is equal to 10 gigahertz and as giga is the multiplicand in place of 10 raised to the power 9 here this is 10 into 10 raised to the power 9 in terms of hertz or you can treat it to be 10 raised to the power 10 Heard simply here. So taking the one power from this term and adding it to the nine, we take ten raised to the power ten hertz here. We are required to make determination of only one value, and that value is characteristic wave impedance. So characteristic impedance for the wave can be denoted in general by capital Z. As the mode of propagation is Tm here, we can denote it by Tm. in subscript to z here so z suffix tm is equal to what is the question in the problem number 2 now for determination of the characteristic wave impedance for the given mode of propagation we can make the use of one formula so the formula here it is represented z suffix tm given in terms of eta in multiplication to the square root the square root involves 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c the ratio is squared here so let us denote this equation by equation number 1 here so for determination of the wave impedance for tm mode of propagation we are required to have the value of eta eta is called as the intrinsic impedance so eta by making the use of epsilon 0 and that of the mu 0 we have the value that eta is equal to 120 pi or we can simply approximate it to the value of 377 being it the impedance it is also measured in terms of ohms so this is the constant value of intrinsic impedance considering the wave propagation in the air medium so this can be substituted in place of eta so for rhs we have one parameter already available here now 
the question of lambda c the cut off wavelength is of course there from the given frequency value 10 gigahertz we can make the determination of lambda zero so let us first of all have the computation of these two and then substitute to have calculation for the wave impedance for tm mode of propagation so very first of all we denote lambda sub c the cut off wavelength corresponding to the mode of propagation specified tm11 so it is given by the formulation twice ab divided by square root of we have a square plus b square so from the generalized formula for the cut off wavelength here substituting small m is equal to 1 and small n is equal to 1 we have the simplified representation of the formula now substituting the values of a and b the internal cross sectional dimensions in terms of centimeters we get it to the second step as 2 into a value is 3 centimeters b value is 2 centimeters and the denominator it will be square root of 3 square plus 2 square here so therefore by the next step we have it the numerator 2 into 3 into 2 so it becomes 12 whereas the denominator here it will be 9 added to the 4 here so finally we obtain the value of cutoff wavelength for tm11 mode and this is equal to 3.3282 as we have substituted the values of a and b in terms of centimeters here we are having the value for cutoff wavelength in terms of centimeters so this is the outline i make to the intermediate value that can be helpful in determination of the wave impedance now another kind of wavelength that is required denoted by lambda sub zero and having the relationship with respect to the frequency we can express lambda 0 is equal to c divided by f where f is the operating frequency and c is the velocity of light into the air or free space medium 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second or 3 into 10 raised to power 10 centimeters per second here so let us have the use of values with respect to the centimeters unit dimension we have 3 into 10 raised to the power 10 for c which is divided by 10 gigahertz so it is 10 into 10 raised to the power 9 here so 10 into 10 raised to power 9 it will be 10 raised to power 10 so this can be cancelled out from numerator and the denominator and we shall be left with the value 3 so being with respect to the dimensions in terms of centimeters lambda 0 wavelength is 3 centimeters so i outline this intermediate value also so both lambda 0 lambda c we have determined and we have also used the value of intrinsic impedance eta to be 120 pi here so substituting these three parameters to the rhs of the equation we obtain the wave impedance z sub x tm given as 120 pi in multiplication to the square root that involves 1 minus in the bracket we have ratio 3 divided by 3.3282 so this is to be squared here so by the next step we have the simplified form 120 pi in multiplication to the square root simplifies to the value 0 0.4330 so finally we obtain the wave impedance z sub x tm as 163.2416 so as the impedance it is there it should always be measured for si system in terms of ohms here so this is the value we have determined let us outline this final answer for problem number two so this was the problem based on to the tm modes in rectangular waveguides given the internal dimensions operating frequency and the operative mode of propagation here characteristic wave impedance is determined here now by the next lecture we shall be addressing the power transmission along with some losses into the rectangular waveguide 
a microwave transmission line and we shall be continuing into the same chapter here. So I hope you are definitely getting benefited with the knowledge we share with respect to the various concepts and the practice of all such problems. For more such information and the details, you can subscribe to eGIDA channel. Thank you.